Charlie Becker with EAA and with me is Bob Schneider with Auto Gyro. And uh, Bob is a designated pilot examiner for Auto Gyros and you're one of how many in the US? Seven. Okay, well I just got a flight with Bob. It was my first time up in an Auto Gyro, so I guess I got to take my fun meter and max it out. <laughs> it was definitely a unique experience. I've never had anything like that. So explain to me, the fixed wing guy, how these things work. I mean, you got a big rotor up here. We do. The rotor is actually freewheeling. It's only powered um, prior to takeoff, pre-rotated, and that shortens our takeoff distance. So after we start our takeoff run, it is unpowered and just powered by the wind. Talk me through a takeoff and landing in an auto gyro. Okay, let's think about the um, airplane and a soft field takeoff. So as we're out on the the taxiway and on the, or on the runway starting to spin up, uh, we will have pull the stick all the way back. We're getting maximum airflow through the rotor system at that point. As the nose wheel comes up, we want to balance on the mains, just keeping the nose wheel a few inches off the ground. As the power and speed come up, we'll get in ground effects. The, all the wheels will be up off the ground. We'll stay there for a few seconds until now we're still building rotor speed and airspeed. We can hit our VX number and climb. Yeah. It's, it sounds simple, but it's actually opposite from what I found in the airplane world. In other words, uh, I can teach someone how to land very quickly. In the gyro. In the gyro. Mm -hmm. But the takeoff is a little more tricky. So, mm -hmm. you know, in the airplane world, uh, air, you know, takeoffs are pretty easy, yeah. landings not so much. Mm -hmm. This is opposite. At least that's what I found. Okay. This engine is a 912 Rotax, 100 okay. horse. Okay. It is uh, does come with an option for the turbo, so you can get a turbo, and that uh, that does change things significantly. The you know turbo is the way to go, but uh, we feel that uh, if you're impressed with this, you'll be ecstatic over the over the turbo. Okay. I see you got your fuel here, and it looks like a visual Sight gauge, gauge there. Yes. Okay. All right. Now you have a tail, but I didn't see any ailerons. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we, we, tilt, up there. Yes, we tilt the entire <laughs> wing. So, you know, in an airplane, you might have a lot of, uh, if you're doing a crosswind takeoff, a lot, but you're using 10% of the wing surface. This, you're tilting the entire wing, so you only have to use about 10% of the control input. Okay. So you still have the rudders though? We do. Uh, there are yaw issues, uh, mostly related to pitch. So mm -hmm. as we pitch up, we need a little bit of right rudder. Well, Bob, let's take a look at the cockpit. Because it's a little different, some of these gauges that, uh, that you have in here than what I'm used to. <laughs> All right, so basically, we have um, airspeed and altimeter, just like any other airplane, engine RPM, our engine gauges over here. What is different about this is uh, we have a pressure gauge which acts as our trim. Uh, the trims are controlled by pneumatic, so air pressure controls the trim and brake system. And that is uh, controlled with that solenoid that says which side of that uh, trim system we're on, ground or flight. Okay. So other than that though, as other than some different gauges, you've got your stick to control. Ailerons and elevator. Yep. Uh -huh. You got rudder pedals and you got your throttle. The, the flight controls um, or flight experience is more, to me, more like airplane than it is helicopter. Well, for a fixed wing guy, what does it typically take to transition into something like Well, you know, gyro? everyone is individual. Mm -hmm. However, most average pilots, if they're they're good pilots, you know, active pilots. I can usually get them safe in about eight to ten hours. Okay. You know, I don't think their training is quite finished there, but it's adequate enough to pass a PTS. Okay. So, Bob, one of the things that I noticed when we were flying is there's a lot of feedback through the stick. I mean, it, it's kind of jumping around on you. That's just what's is that the rotor blades? It's kind of it's kind of the nature of the beast. One blade is coming around, hitting the wake of the other. Um, for me, it's kind of like sea legs. Um, I don't notice it anymore. The ability to make like a 180 degree turn was pretty impressive. You know, if you ever were finding yourself to want to immediately reverse course. 
about how many of the auto gyros are out there flying from the company or For our brand here in the United States there's about 65 um, flying um, over a, a two three year period worldwide there are about 1800 flying um, and they are you know, cert certified or permit to fly in most other countries with the exception of the United sure. States so if somebody's interested in the U.S. getting going, is there any uh, path you'd recommend? Yes, definitely take proper instruction um, and learn to fly the aircraft that you, you want to fly. You know, flying a different model perhaps doesn't work as well as flying the model that you want because each one has its own unique characteristics. One of the more impressive things was the landing. I mean, we came in and it was probably the softest, shortest, non-event that, <laughs> that I've ever experienced in an aircraft. Uh, that was pretty wild. I don't know if we actually rolled at all. <laughs> it didn't seem like we did at all. I've always kind of, it was, it was great for me to get a chance to fly in one because I've always had a, a, you know, a desire to check this part of aviation out. It's always been kind of interesting, kind of cool. I mean, it seems like a much more affordable way to have kind of a helicopter experience. You know, that was always the, it's not quite a helicopter, but um, it, it gives you that same kind of uh, feel and, and way to fly. And, and you know, I've, I've seen at the EA Museum that, uh, you know, we have some of the Picarin auto gyros there. And I've always thought that that concept never really got fully developed and I you know I, th I think with things like this you're seeing that you know continue on now into the modern era. Bob what is it about the auto gyro specifically that you like I mean you've probably flown other gyro planes you picked this one. It's a uh, fit and finish mm -hmm. the the company that stands behind it there's a you know it's not just a something tried and true there's a lot of engineering it is Section T compliant, which is very strict, similar to our FAA requirements. Uh, and the fact that they've got, you know, over 100 employees working in a real, proper aircraft company. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's quite impressive to, to visit the factory. Well, Bob, thanks for giving us a tour of the auto, Joe. I really appreciated Certainly. the flight. It was definitely <laughs> one for the bucket list and something I'll never forget. Yeah. So thank well, maybe you. Maybe come out and do it again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>